Alright guys, so now if you saw part one of this video, you saw my pre-activation, what I do, again, two to three exercises, high reps, low rest. I do that before all my workouts uh, for lower body and upper body. Now, after, uh, after the pre-activation, I will do usually uh, one to three compound movements. For upper body, it's usually only one, but for lower body, it's typically two and sometimes three depending on the day, depending on my programming. So right now I'm gonna show you the sumo deadlift. This is the very traditional uh, method. There's nothing special about this, just a sumo deadlift. It's my favorite kind of deadlift, but I do lots of variations, including conventional deadlift, straight leg deadlift, uh, or block pulls, where you do it off of something that's elevated. You can either use blocks or put a lot of mats if you have thick mats. Uh, then you can also um, do rack pulls too, but those are not as good, uh, I would say, as, as block pulls. So I like variations of all the compound lifts, and I interchange them through my programming as I like. So as I said, this is a sumo deadlift, so I'm going to be wide. Uh, everyone is a little bit different. Some people are all the way out and some people are a little bit more narrow than me. Do what you like, do what feels good, and play around with different stances. I typically have my feet out to these marks, usually is where my shins are. Then what I want to do is I want to bring my hands down straight. I don't want to bring them out and I don't want to bring them in. Bringing them out is, it, it's just a different center of gravity, and especially if you bring them in, it can rotate a lot, which you don't want. So bring it straight down, shoulder width. You'll see a lot of people do a switch grip. Uh, when it gets heavier, it's almost impossible to be as strong, double overhand, if you are pulling for a max effort. Right now, I'm not, I'm just doing some working sets. So I'm gonna be doing double overhand. You'll also see people use straps or versa grips. I'm not a big fan of that because I like to train my grip also. So I usually will only use wrist wraps. I get my wrist wraps from howmuchybench.net, which is Mark Bell's slingshot company. So I'm gonna do a double overhand grip. Again, if you're going for a max effort, you may either wanna use straps or you wanna do a switch grip like this, uh, whichever hand is more comfortable for you. What I'm gonna do now, a feeder position, my chest is up high, I'm gonna get a big breath of air and I'm gonna hold it. So now my core is braced and it's tight. I'm going to squat down to the bar. I'm going to bring my hands straight down. Again, shoulder width. I'm going to wrap my hands around very tight. And do you hear that? That is the bar. I'm pulling the tension out of the bar. So if you just pull it, the bar is dead weight. You want to have some kind of momentum going. And before you even start pulling, you're going to use your back and you're going to hear that click and then you know you pulled some of the slack out of the bar. And then you'll see me deadlift. So now we're here with front squats. This would be my second uh, compound movement of the day. So everyone front squats a little bit differently, but typically what I recommend is if you have the flexibility and the mobility is to put two fingers wherever you're comfortable and then wrap underneath it like this and have your wrist back. Now, some people can't do this because uh, of their wrists and some people can't do it because of their shoulders. You can't because of your shoulders. There's two ways you can get around this. One would be to do this, to put it on your shoulders this way. Uh, a lot of the bigger guys will do this if they don't have the mobility. But even better probably would be to take uh, straps and to loop them right here and then to use the ends of the straps to kind of hold it up to mimic this. So either way, play around with it. Try to work on your mobility and your flexibility and know that this is the ideal way. I'm gonna put my fingers here. I'm gonna put my shoulders underneath. It's gonna be really important for me throughout the entire exercise to keep my elbows up. Think about somebody is pushing them up the entire time because your back is what's gonna fail more than your legs at this point. So I get underneath the bar, normal stance. I always stand shoulder width apart uh, underneath the bar. When I unrack it, I unrack with my hips and then I take a very deliberate walkout. I'm gonna take a three-step walkout. Some people do two. Uh, three is usually better for consistency reasons, but if you do two and you like it, then go for it. But the key is consistency. Every time you squat, it should look the same, whether it's the bar or it's 300 pounds. So you're gonna watch the three-step walkout now. I'm gonna get air first, of course, brace. Unlock with my hips. One step straight back, then the next step is out, and then the other step just follows that foot. So now my feet are straight. 
and I'm ready to squat. This is my normal width. Some people squat more narrow, some people squat more wide. So I'm gonna get, again, big air, elbows up. And on the way down, you really wanna focus on pushing your knees out. You don't want your knees to cave at all. When we get a side view of the squats, all my squats look like this. I deliberately bring my hips underneath me before I squat. I have a very arched back, a lot of women do, and that can lead to problems over time with your lower back feeling strained and really fatigued. So watch from the side how, when I, after I get my air, before I squat, I tuck my hips under, I engage my glutes, and then I'm in a much better position to squat. on that, if your glutes look good when you're squatting, you may not be squatting right. If you're engaging them properly, it's going to look like this ugly clench underneath. And I promise you will see a lot more glute results that way than having them look good when you squat. All right, so now that I've done two compound exercises, again, I'll usually do one to three compound lifts, and then I'll do my accessory work afterwards. And my accessory work is very dependent on my weak areas, and also dependent on my time, and most importantly, dependent upon my equipment. I try to go to different gyms so I get a variety of different things for this reason. Uh, for example, one of the things I'm gonna superset right now, I don't have at any of my gyms. So when I go to a different gym and it has something that my other gyms don't, I definitely take advantage of that because it's, it's new stimulus. Uh, but I'm also gonna show a few things that, you know, with dumbbells, that everybody can do so it's not really uh, like an issue as far as your equipment goes. So be flexible, try to go to different gyms uh, if you can for that reason. If your gym happens to have everything, then that is amazing. <laughs> now, for accessory work, a lot of times I will superset based on time and I also just, it ups the intensity of the exercise and my workout, which is great. Uh, but it's usually a time factor for me. If I want to do something a little bit heavier, sometimes I will superset it still, but I'll take more rest. Other times I'll just do it by itself. Uh, and then other times if I don't want to superset something, I will just do maybe some drop sets on that uh, exact exercise. So it's really different. The main takeaway is spice up your workouts, try different things, and try different equipment. So the first superset I'm gonna do is a hamstring curl, and almost every gym is gonna have a hamstring curl. So I would definitely recommend using that. And then the second thing I'm gonna do is a glute movement. Uh, it's a Cybex machine, which I really like. If I go to a gym that has one of these, I'm all over it. A lot of them don't though, so I will show a different uh, press variation that you can do. Uh, but that's gonna be the superset for today. doing the leg curls, I kept my toes really neutral. A lot of people will try to flex their calves and they'll actually end up using their calves along with their hamstrings. So if that's what you're doing, just try to lower the weight. I know it's a lot harder. <laughs> uh, and also for hamstring curls, I really find, for me at least, that it really helps when I do a lot of lighter sets at first and a lot of drop sets. Because for me, I don't really get too much out of really heavy hamstring curls. I'd rather do something like an RDL or a dumbbell RDL for heavy hamstring work versus this. See what works for you. It might be better that you do heavy on here, but just play around with different rep ranges. All right, so like we talked about, some of the gyms don't have all of the leg equipment, especially glute stuff. So it's really interdependent on where you're at. But most gyms always have an assisted pull-up machine. So you can do glute press downs on here and I'm gonna demonstrate that now. You're gonna to wanna to distribute your weight through your heel on this exercise. And I also like to turn my feet out just a little bit, probably about 30 degrees. And my foot is on the second step, the other foot. And then I'm gonna usually lean a little bit forward. Not really that I'm pressing on here, but I'm just leaning forward for the actual position. Find what works for you, find what you feel best in your glutes and your tie-in area. You'll also notice that I don't let my foot come all the way up. 
past, I usually stop at about parallel. I press all the way down and then I come back up. Because once you do this, you start engaging your quads more. I wanted to show you guys two exercises that you can do with dumbbells, so every gym will have this. These are two things that I like a lot. So the first would be a dumbbell RDL. And I feel these a lot. I really, really enjoy these. And you can kind of perform them in a different way to feel your glutes a little bit more or to feel your hamstrings a little bit more. And again, this is something that you can go heavy on, but you can go lighter on and do drop sets or you can superset it. So I'm going to show it as a superset today, but if you want to do it as a single exercise, that is totally appropriate. And also something that's good for progressive overload. Whereas some of the other stuff like machines, every machine is a little different. It's kind of hard to overload a machine that's not plate loaded. So plate loaded barbells and dumbbells are really good for progressive overload. So we're going to have this and then we're going to have a dumbbell plie squat. Again, something you can go pretty heavy with. Just make sure that the, uh, the width of the dumbbell is, is pretty wide so you can hold it easier. If they're really narrow, it's kind of hard to hold the heavier dumbbells. So you want to start with your feet. I do pretty narrow, probably a little bit more narrow than uh, shoulder width. And you want to have your chest up, shoulders back. You want to have your lats engaged also, especially if it's heavier. And then the uh, same thing with the squats when I tuck my hips underneath. When I do RDLs, I do that because otherwise I will arch my back too much and use too much lower back and less glutes and hamstrings. So for the dumbbell plie squat, I'm going to go in the wider stance again. Very similar to my sumo deadlift stance. So I'm going to go wide. And I'm going to sit down, and I really want to think about sitting down and also a little bit back. Again, glutes underneath you. You're constantly sticking your butt out, arching your lower back. You're not engaging your glutes as well as you could be. You might still be feeling it, but not as much if your hips are underneath you and you're in a neutral spot. video you've seen that through most of my glute movements or any of my leg movements I'm really conscious about being explosive and squeezing my glutes I'm not just passively exercising or training them I'm really trying to squeeze and explode through and I promise you if you try that it will take your glute training to the next level thank you guys for watching